Green your webs. Welcome for another edition of the Pokemon Go Fireside Chat. Against my better judgment, I'm gonna do a topic that has the possibility of being outdated, and I'm just gonna cross and pray that by the couple weeks that it takes to get this up, that everything won't become outdated. But with the reveal that Mega Evolutions were coming to Pokemon Go a couple weeks ago, kinda hard not to talk about it. I guess I'll start with what we do know. Which, as I'm recording this, is very little. All we know for sure is that Mega Evolutions will be coming to Pokemon Go in some shape and form. And it'll be released sometime this year. It's possible we won't get all the Pokemon that can Mega Evolve at once. And according to Niantic, the Mega Evolution will be done in a way to make use out of the mechanics exclusive to Pokemon Go. Well, this could be interpreted in multiple ways, but... Honestly, that's not what I want to focus on today. What I really want to focus on is, are the Pokemon themselves. With some experience in the main series games, especially in the generation where Mega Evolutions were first revealed, and the only one that had new Mega Evolutions, technically they were in the generation after, but they were more of an afterthought than anything else. And there was no Mega Evolutions introduced during that time. It was all of the old Mega Evolutions. I guess that's another place I could start, giving a little background of the Mega Evolution in the series of Pokemon in general. It started out as a mechanic in the Generation 6 games Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. Funny enough, they do try to tie the lore of Mega Evolutions directly into the stories of the Generation 6 games, both Pokemon X and Y which is basically an origin story to Mega Evolutions and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire despite the fact that the original games came out well before Mega Evolutions were ever introduced. It's kind of interesting how they tie all of it together, but I'm going to avoid spoilers from the main series games in this particular podcast. I'll give a quick overview of what Mega Evolutions are without going too into detail to the point of spoiling the plots for either of these main series games. Now, despite the name Evolution, it's not completely accurate to call Mega Evolution an evolution, at least in a traditional sense. When most Pokemon players, including those that play Go, think of Evolution, they think of more of a permanent transformation that gives an increase in stats boost. Kind of like the Pokemon growing up. Mega Evolution is more like an in-game transformation. Mega Evolution is achieved with a Pokemon and their trainer each having a particular item. And when those two items join forces, that allows a Pokemon to achieve its Mega Evolution form. Like an Evolution, they increase in power greatly, sometimes even changing in type and ability. However, this effect lasts only during the time frame of the battle, and only one Pokemon on the team can be Mega Evolve at a time. And it's not like you can just like Mega Evolve and when your Pokemon faints evolve a second Mega Pokemon. Nope. Once you choose a Mega Evolution to make it take place, you are stuck with that Pokemon being your Mega Evolve for the rest of the battle. After the battle, your Pokemon goes back to normal, and you can repeat the process in the next battle. Like I've said before, both Trainer and Pokemon have to have their own item in order for the Mega Evolution process to take place. For the Trainer, they must have a Keystone, though the exact shape and form of this Keystone can vary. Most Trainers carry it around like a bracelet, but other Trainers you encounter throughout your journey wear it like an accessory in other ways, whether it be a pendant, or a glove, or even an anklet. The way you wear the Keystone doesn't matter as long as you have the keystone in your possession. As for the Pokemon, each species of Pokemon has their own Mega Stone that they can equip, and between the trainer's keystone and the Pokemon's held item, that is how Mega Evolutions achieve. For example, if you have a Venusaurite, you can evolve Venusaur into its Mega Form. Take a wild guess at what Blastoise's Mega Stone is called. Blastoinite. And Charizard, Charizard Knight, and I think you get the point. And while most Pokemon only have one Mega Stone, if you're a real fan favorite, you get spoiled by Game Freak and get two Mega Stones, like Charizard. 
who has a Mega Stone for both Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. Obviously, after the X and Y games, you're able to just get both these items in future installments of Pokemon. On the upside, even though there's two different Mega Stones for one Pokemon, they do tend to have drastic differences in these cases. For example, the Mega Stone for Pokemon X for Charizard lets it turn into a Fire Dragon type with an ability that increases moves that require use of its claws, and overall making it a lot more of a physical attacker. Meanwhile, Charizard Y, it keeps its fire flying typing, but gets an amazing ability called Drought, which just summons the sun, not only boosting its fire type moves, but allowing it to use the grass type move Solar Beam with one turn. Usually the downside of Solar Beam's immense power is the fact that it takes two turns, one to store up sunlight and another to release it. But you can bypass that with Drought to give Charizard excellent coverage without having to worry about the otherwise inevitable downside, especially because Charizard is a frail Pokemon, so if you use it against a trainer with a high enough skill level, you'll never last long enough to actually make Solar Beam worthwhile, unless you already have the sun out and have that free access to Solar Beam without its most major downside. And I think you're starting to see just how a Mega Evolution can be so powerful. Like I said, you do get an immense amount of stats, but stats aren't all of it, especially for the best Megas. Usually they get an ability and sometimes even a typing that complements the Pokemon to make it really shine in the areas that it specializes in. For example, going back to Mega Blastoise, it gains the ability Mega Launcher, which specializes in increasing the power of particular moves that you would imagine being launched out of a cannon. And honestly, that's the type of ability you would expect a Pokemon with a big huge cannon, especially after his Mega Evolution, to have. For Blastoise in particular, the moves that get boosted by this ability include Aurora Spear, Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, and Water Pulse. I want to give a special shout out to Water Pulse, because it's usually not a very powerful water type move, even in the main series games. However, it does have an interesting side effect of being able to confuse the opponent, so just the fact that these otherwise weak moves, getting enough of a power boost to actually be useful to have on a move set, kind of allows you to do interesting things with the Pokemon. To give another example of how they can make Mega Evolution stronger without just increasing the base stats would be Mega Sableye. Sableye was kind of a Pokemon that didn't really see much action up until his Mega Evolution, but with the Mega Evolution, it became a lot more bulky and gained an interesting ability called Magic Bounce. In the main series games, Magic Bounce allows you to reflect certain effects. And while I guess that does include stats effects that we're familiar with in Pokemon Go, like raising and lowering attack, I completely forgot about that because of the more, even more amazing uses that it has in the main series games. The first thing I think of is an element that you don't see in Pokemon Go, but plays a key element in the main series competitive scene. Specific moves that pretty much inserts different side effects as you swap in and out of battle. Moves that include Stealth Rock, Spikes, Toxic Spikes, and Electro Web. All these moves either like do damage when a Pokemon swaps in or net out, or inflicts a side effect to that Pokemon. Like in the case of Toxic Spikes, whenever you swap, that Pokemon gets poisoned. Magic Bounce allows you to reflect all those things. So if you have your Sableye sitting out, and your opponent's just about to use Toxic Spikes, you can make it evolve your Sableye, its ability would become Magic Bounce, and you will reflect that poison inducing move onto your opponent. And speaking of which, I think that works with direct status effects like Thunder Wave being an infamous one in the main series games for paralyzing opponents, crippling your ability to move. If they try to do that on Pokemon with Magic Bounce, they end up getting paralyzed instead, for the most part. And with some Pokemon's abilities, both before and after they make it evolve, can lead to some interesting strategies. For example, with Melwile, its non-mega form can have the ability to intimidate, which lowers Pokemon's attacks. So you can send out a Melwile to get the attack drop, and then Mega Evolve, and still get the effects of its Mega Evolution ability. Which, funny enough, the Mega form of Melwile's ability is just an ability that gives it even more attack. So you come in, do an intimidate to lower your opponent's attack, then you Mega Evolve, and not only get the stats boost from the Mega Evolution, but you also get an ability that increases your attack even more so. There's a lot of fun strategies that can be had with Mega Evolutions in the right situation. 
And before I get any deeper into abilities, I should clarify exactly how the base stats increase works. Essentially, every Pokemon gets 100 base stats to work around with after its Mega Evolution. Some Pokemon can get even more powerful, or have a base stats increase more than 100, if some of their other base stats decrease. For example, back to Sableye, it technically gets more than 100 base stats to work with, but only because it loses like 20 stats from its speed, so it's actually slower than its normal form, but that allows it to become even more powerful and more bulky. And there's a couple of Pokemon that work around like that. And as I was saying with the abilities, just allowing it to really reach the potential of these Pokemon even more so than just giving them a stats boost, does lead to a little bit of concern about how it's going to be implemented into Pokemon Go, because as you know, we don't have abilities in Pokemon Go currently. Even though it's a very slim chance, I suppose it is possible that they introduce abilities in Pokemon Go. They did have to take down the entire servers of the game, and who knows, maybe they're hiding... You would think that something more radical than just updating Go Battle League servers would have happened in that time frame, considering the game's never been taken down. Not to get too far down the speculation scale, but maybe adding abilities was one of those things. Or maybe it's just for these Mega Evolutions in general. Because there's going to be some unique mechanics that aren't otherwise in Pokemon Go. So as much as I would love them to see even just a simplified version of the abilities from the main series games implemented into Pokemon Go, I highly doubt that'll be a thing and it'll mostly just, they'll just mostly stick to the stats increases and for the certain situations where Pokemon do change type, like Charizard X, they'll change the Pokemon's type as well as increase the stats. Which, even though I love to see Niantic have some fun with abilities, even if there's just like simplified abilities, <laughs> that reminds me of another podcast idea that I've wa been wanting to do for a long time. But alas, there's too much to talk about with Megas, don't let me get that sidetracked. I think it'll be okay if Mega Evolutions are just a stats increase. It'll still make a lot of Pokemon a lot more powerful than they otherwise would be. Even if it makes some Pokemon that are already too powerful, <laughs> even more powerful. I gotta hold myself back and not jump the gun, cause that's gonna be for the second half of the podcast where I talk about specific Mega Evolutions. Though, is there anything I even need to say before going into that particular half? I covered how the Mega Evolutions get stronger just from stats alone, how they get different abilities, sometimes different typing. We speculated about how these Mega Evolutions would be without their abilities or if Pokemon Go would implement abilities. Yeah, I think I think there's a little bit of lore I want to add into the whole concept of Mega Evolutions, and that'll be the last thing before we jump into what Mega Evolutions want to look out for, and Mega Evolutions in particular that probably won't be as good and go, but I still want to put on under the spotlight, either because they're my favorite Pokemon, and I appreciate them actually getting better, even if it's not OP better. Or they have an interesting combination of ability, typing, and etc. Although I guess I could speculate on the held item concept, I, but it's kind of self-explanatory. Even though you do need held items to pull off Mega Evolutions in the main series games, Pokemon Go doesn't have held items, and considering games like Let's Go exist that don't have held items, but also have Mega Evolutions, I highly doubt that Pokemon Go is going to introduce held items just to do Mega Evolutions. Because honestly, it's not necessary. The whole held item thing is kind of more of a balancing thing specific to the main series games. Because if Mega Evolution could happen in games where you could have a held item, but they didn't need it any sort of means, like if they could have a held item and Mega Evolve, they could be pretty OP. Looking at you, Rayquaza. <coughs> but I gotta resist jumping the gun want to give a little bit more lore to the whole concept of Mega Evolutions for those who have never played XY, Omega Ruby, or Alpha Sapphire. There's a lot of speculation within the world of Pokemon of exactly how a Mega Evolution is achieved. The most popular theory is the one theorized by the professor of the Kalos region, aka the world where Pokemon X and Y take place, Professor Sycamore. He theorizes that Mega Evolution acts like a symbol of friendship between Trainer and Pokemon. That Mega Evolution can truly take place 
only when the bond between trainer and Pokemon is strong. As much as I like that theory, it is worth noting that within the gameplay of the Pokemon games, friendship does not play a role in Mega Evolution, so they don't have to tie into any sort of friendship thing in Pokemon Go if they really don't want to. In the main series games, any Pokemon can Mega Evolve despite their level of friendship. But even with that said, I will stick by lore-wise that Mega Evolution is a thing that takes place between trainer and Pokemon that symbolizes their bond. Because we're also talking about the game where multiple occasions, or should I say the game series, there's been multiple occasions where you just get a starter Pokemon and you meet up with a Pokemon professor less than an hour later and the professor says, Oh, you and your Pokemon have a great bond with each other, so... Within the lore of Pokemon, like, even if the happiness doesn't say otherwise, it's still possible to have, like, bond between trainer and Pokemon, so it's just... It makes sense from a story standpoint, not a gameplay mechanic standpoint, video game logic, that's what I'm trying to get at. Still, I do like the theories going around that being best buddies with a Pokemon will play a role in Mega Evolutions and Pokemon Go. I'd be, I'd actually be cool with that taking place, even though, like I said, it doesn't have to be completely tied to friendship in order for Mega Evolution. I do feel like it does, because the whole lore of it being tied to the relationship between Trainer and Pokemon Doll, that's why I'd be a little upset if they just decided to make Mega Evolution Pokemon completely separate Pokemon. Kind of like the same way that they make you do raid bosses for both Giratina Ultra Form and Giratina Ult Origin Form. For some reason that is a bit more okay with that when, when it comes to forms because like you're kind of already getting multiple Pokemon in Pokemon Go so it kind of would make sense that some of them take one form and one some others take another form. But with Mega Evolution it's specifically tied to the actions you take with your Pokemon rather than just what the Pokemon can do on its own. So that's kind of why I feel it bothers me a bit to think about the idea that Mega Evolutions could just be a new raid boss, because technically it's something that could happen. I just really hope they don't, especially with the whole wording that they're going to work with the mechanics of Pokemon Go to make it... I forget the exact wording, but it kind of made it sound like that. It made it feel unlikely that the whole Mega Evolution Pokemon as raid bosses would be the answer. Unless they did a thing where you did a raid boss against a Mega Evolved Pokemon, but got the Mega Stone to use on your own Pokemon after you defeated it. That would be cool, I'll admit. But I'm getting off topic again. Kind of, I feel like the game developers did it intentionally because they didn't like Mega Evolved forms anymore. But funny enough, in the sequel generation, Sun and Moon, you do get access to Mega Evolutions post-game, while in X and Y, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you got access to it within the game story itself. Point being, you do get access to Mega Evolutions eventually, and while it's mostly just used because people really love Mega Evolutions from the previous generation, there's apparently lore that you can read in the Pokédex specifically on the Mega Evolve forms that feel like they contradict the things that we learned about Mega Evolution X and Y. Some things about the Pokémon being in pain when they do the Mega Evolution, some of them being incredibly aggressive, and little things like that. I don't, don't want to get too deep into that topic because I still stand by the whole speculation of how it works in X and Y. But I personally like to tie it to a cultural thing where Alola is technically a drastically different region from the Kalos region. So if outsiders looking in may view the Mega Evolutions as a completely different thing from the people actually using Mega Evolutions. It may be worth like looking in more into that specific lore yourself if you're if I pique your interest at all. How much more can I talk about Mega Evolutions without diving into spoiler territory? Well, I do want to at least bring up that in X and Y, a lot of the game's lore revolves around a major war that happened within the Kalos region. And let's just say Mega Evolutions are tied into that war. Even though Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, they try to tie Mega Evolutions into that game story, it's tough to say without spoiling it, especially because a lot of it only comes into play in the post-game Delta chapter. But I will say that Mega Evolution does tie into that game story to some degree, 
which honestly caught me by surprise because with how closely tied X and Y story was to Mega Evolutions, I just assumed that it would be a feature of the X and Y games at first, but I guess it was just so beloved a mechanic that they decided to extend it into the remakes, especially because they were still of the same generation. And that's kind of why they were, were kind of forced into the following generation, even though like it wasn't really part of the story, but people really loved the Mega Evolutions. So even though that Sun and Moon had their own mechanic that tied into that game's world, they still had felt obligated to include Mega Evolutions. Welp, we're already 20 minutes deep in, and there's still plenty I want to talk about, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a break, and when I come back to talk with you guys again, I'm going to focus on specific Mega Evolve Pokemon. I want to make sure I highlight the Pokemon that are inevitably going to be incredibly powerful in Pokemon Go that you should keep your eyes out for. But also want to give a little bit of a highlight to Pokemon's Mega Forms that I just find neat. Whether it be a Pokemon that I thought had a cool combination of stats, typing, and ability, or just the fact that they gave love to some of my favorite Pokemon that I assumed would never really see the daylight in the competitive scene until they got a Mega Form. All that after the break. See you in a sec. It's been a couple of days. I did some homework so I could actually speculate on the topic of Mega Evolutions in some basis in reality, including spending at least half an hour making notes. I'm about as ready as ever to get into this. I want to lead this off right in the bat that I will not be able to cover every single Mega Evolution in this episode. We're running so long as is. And honestly, with just how much of a stats boost alone a Pokemon gets when a Mega evolves, I definitely see potential for any Pokemon that gain a Mega Evolution to be viable in some competitive form. Even if it's more of a focus of a lower league like Ultra League rather than being a rating powerhouse. That said, the things that I hope to focus on today include some of the Pokemon that have the top CP in Pokemon Go after their Mega Evolution. At least based on the calculations of the CP formula that Pokemon Go already uses to convert the Pokemon stats from the main series games into Pokemon Go. I'll also be giving a shout out to a few Pokemon that may not have the top CP but you probably still want to keep your eyes on. I'll explain why when we get to it. And assuming the podcast hasn't already run over 40 minutes, I want to spend a little time talking about a couple of my personal favorites or Pokemon that have an interesting history with their Mega Evolution, or even just how have interesting abilities that I think would be cool in Pokemon Go. Likely that'll be its own podcast though because we're running pretty long as is for my particular style. Let's get into it. Before I get into the kings, the ones that if you've been paying any attention to this game you probably already heard of, I want to give a little bit of a shout out to a couple non-legendary Pokemon that managed to be incredibly powerful with their Mega Evolution. First off, Mega Metagross. You guys probably already heard about Metagross. Not only is it the top steel type Pokemon, but it is the best dealer of DPS slash damage per second out of any Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Yet, it gets a Mega Evolution, which will make it even more powerful than it already is. So I think it's self-explanatory why you want to keep your eyes out for Mega Metagross. If you know why Metagross is good, you know why Mega Metagross is going to be even better. In a similar topic, shoutouts to Mega Garchomp. According to the CP calculations, it is the top non-legendary Mega Evolution. Plus, with his Dragon Ground typing, having a Mega Evolution on top of that could be amazing for Masters League. It probably won't be the top Dragon type for reasons you will get into very, very soon, but it'll definitely be the top Ground type. 
at least until Primal Forms are released. I just realized my notes didn't have anything about that, nor my source. It only focused on Mega Evolutions, despite the fact that Primal Forms are essentially Mega Evolutions in terms of mechanics within the video games. Just just assume that Groudon... <laughs> just assume that Gro Garchomp will be the best unless Groudon gets his Primal Form. And assume if I ever bring up Water Types, just assume that Kyogre would be even better than those with its Primal Form. All that said, let's stop being around the bush. Because there's two legendary Pokemon that do get Mega Evolutions. Not like these Pokemon were already powerful enough without a Mega Evolution. Let's make them even more OP to assure that they stay the most powerful things in the game. First, I've been alluding to it for a long time, and here it is. The best dragon type in Pokemon Go will indefinitely be Mega Rayquaza. Yes, that amazingly good dragon type, which is one of, if not the best dragon types in Pokemon Go already. They gave it a Mega Evolution. Unless they make some major nerfs to this thing, Mega Rayquaza will gain a CP of 6,040. At least, that's what a 100% maxed out Ray Rayquaza would have for a CP after its Mega Evolution. For a little context of just how much of a jump that is, the next highest CP is Mega Garchomp, and as I was saying, is going to be the strongest ground type Mega. It has a max CP of only 5,425. Yeah, I said only. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I said that the stats boost that a Pokemon gains when a Mega evolves really has an impact on the power of the Pokemon. We're talking about a stats boost that literally made some Pokemon in the main series game that were previously unviable in any shape or form. Some of the top class cuts. Even with those massive stats, Mega Rayquaza will never be as OP as it is in the main series game. And despite it not really being relevant for Pokemon Go, I want to take a couple minutes to explain what that is. Because you guys gotta understand just how broken Mega Rayquaza is in the main series games. As I said in the first half of the show, in order to Mega Evolve, typically a Pokemon needs to hold a Mega Stone relevant to that particular species of Pokemon. Rayquaza is the exception to this rule. The sole exception. This is a huge deal in the main series games because a critical element of the competitive scene in the main series games involve holding on to items to give additional bonus effects to the Pokemon. So one of the downsides of doing a Mega Evolution in the main series games was you would have to sacrifice that ability to have an additional held item because that would be reserved for your Mega Stone. Rayquaza doesn't need that. In order to Mega Evolve, all Rayquaza needs is to know a specific move called Dragon Ascent. I'll try to tiptoe around it, but on the off chance I get into too much detail, slight spoil warning to the post game of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Rayquaza gets fed a bunch of keystones, mega stones, I don't remember exactly which, but the reason Rayquaza doesn't have to hold on to a mega stone is essentially because it has a mega stone inside its body. <laughs> essentially ate one. More or less, like so it's like, screw the rules, I'm gonna eat my Mega Stone and hold on to a held item that boosts my attack even further. So between that and his ability Delta Stream, that is why Rayquaza is so busted in the main series games. Wanna know just how busted? Well, to do that, I need to give you a quick history lesson of the competitive scene in the main series games. I mean, you have the traditional, officially run rule set, but the one that's focused more on single battle is an unofficial rule set. Kind of like how Pokemon Go has Go Battle League, but the Silph Arena is where a lot of the hardcore competitor competitive scene takes place at. 
Well, I'm getting as small gone as the, the main series Pokemon games as Silph Arena is to Pokemon Go. Just in the sense that they're both fan-made, yet really relied upon in the competitive scene for each of these games. And I bring up Smogon because they <laughs> not only banned Rayquaza, but they banned it from the ban tier. Most of the competitive scene in Smogon singles takes place in what they call the OU tier. And Pokemon that are too weak to compete in the OU tier drop down to UU, RU, NU, and goes down like that. However, there are some Pokemon that are just so powerful that if they were allowed in OU, it would mostly just be a couple OP legendaries running the show. So they get banned from OU and put in a tier called Ubers. To give you some context of what runs around in Ubers, we basically have like Mewtwo, sometimes the primal forms of Kyogre and Groudon, along with God. If you know enough about Gen 4, you know what I'm talking about. They all run around in the OU tier. Mega Rayquaza is so powerful <laughs> when you let it Mega Evolve and give it an item called Life Orb, which essentially boosts its power, but allows it to take recoil damage. It breaks even this Uber tier specifically made to put the Pokemon that are too powerful to be in the OU tier. So yeah, Mega Rayquaza is so powerful, it got banned from the ban tier. And because I realized I never talked about it, let's talk about Delta Stream a little bit. Because we'll probably never hear about it again in the world of Pokemon Go. Plus, I'm pretty sure it played at least a little factor of just why Mega Rayquaza is so powerful. Now, Delta Stream is an ability that creates a unique weather type. Weather being something that works drastically differently in Pokemon, the main series game, compared to Pokemon Go. Delta Stream essentially takes away all of Rayquaza's weaknesses it would have as a part flying type. So the double weakness to ice type moves? Gone. It's only weak to ice type moves because it's a dragon type. Weaknesses to rock type moves? Also gone. And when I read it out loud it doesn't sound as um, incredible as it would otherwise. But just simply taking away part of its weakness to ice type moves, I can imagine that really breaking Rayquaza in Pokemon Go. Because it's an amazing DPS machine but a lot of its weaknesses are held back by a lot of weaknesses shared by other dragon flying types, and that's just pretty much how a nice type can sneeze on it and it will die. Essentially turning Rayquaza into a dragon type, but still retaining all the resistances of a dragon flying type, is crazy for a Pokemon that's already got stupid high stats. The ability to hold onto a held item to make it even more powerful and just because of these elements of held item and abilities likely never making it to Pokemon Go, that's why I claim that Mega Rayquaza cannot be as OP as it is in the main series games. What can be as OP as it is in the main series games is freaking Mewtwo. <laughs> like, Mega Rayquaza and Mega Mewtwo are evidence in them themselves that Mega Evolutions were not made to balance Pokemon as much as they were to just appeal to the fans. Essentially pokey fanfare. Mewtwo did not need a Mega Evolution, and yet it got two. It is the Pokemon besides Charizard to gain a Mega Evolution for both versions of the Gen 6 games. It has an X form and a Y form. The Y form is easily the Pokemon with the highest CP in all of Pokemon Go. Followed right behind this Y form, which while isn't as strong as the X form, gains a fighting subtype. So it becomes like a Meta Chan, but instead of having terrible CP, it has the best CP. <laughs> so I hate to be the bearer of bad news of the rich get richer, but yeah, these two legendaries are going to be your top thing to look out for when it comes to Mega Evolutions. So if you got Mewtwo either from Raids or from that special research, the time research we had for the Throwback Challenge, hold on to them. You'll have an incredible Psychic type, maybe even an incredible Fighting type. The only thing that I can think of that might hold Mewtwo back 
from being a powerful flame type is the lack of flame type moves. Though we are talking about the Pokemon that was one of the top ice types, despite not being an ice type Pokemon, just because of its incredible raw stats and having access to a good ice type move like Ice Beam. And Mewtwo does get Focus Blast, and its stats are going to get even more powerful when the Mega evolves, so it could be possible that any type that Mewtwo has a move for, it could become the best user of that type, at least in the raid scene. We would just need people who are better experts at this sort of stuff than me to crunch numbers and know exactly how that'll work. And similar notion with Rayquaza. It will be the best dragon type. Probably technically be the best flying type. Because it does get aerial ace. And I think it gets a flying quick move too. So that alone will give it enough. So just having moves of that type. Will be enough to make it an incredible force of that type. Just because of its raw stats. I just can't think of too many situations where you actually would want to use a flying type over some other type. But hey I figure I'd bring it up as an option because it. Omega Rayquaza would cover things that Omega Mewtwo wouldn't cover quite as well. But I think we can make things go a little bit more in a positive note by talking about Mega Evolutions that will probably be powerful in their own right that aren't legendary Pokemon. And even if they don't have the strongest CP, some of these I still think would be worth looking out for because of their move pool and the type of roles they already play and some other elements of Pokemon Go's meta. First thing I want to give a shout out to is Mega Trianatar. It will have the top CP out of all Dark types after its Mega Evolution. Follow shortly behind Mega Gyarados because it goes from being a Water Flying type to a Water Dark type. And Gyarados does have access to Crunch, but since Trianatar at least has access to Crunch and Bite, I think Trianatar will do better as a Dark type even though there are moves better than Bite and Crunch as Dark type moves. Also can't forget about the fact that Tranitar is a Rock type, so if you have one from Community Day with Smackdown, you easily have the best Rock type in the game after the stats boost from Omega Evolution. Again. <laughs> Remember when Tranitar was the king of everything? Well, depending on how Omega Evolutions are implemented into the game, we may have a return to form for Tranitar. And it does justify putting Larvitar back in the research breakthrough box. So if you haven't been doing your research already you and you don't have a full army of Tranitars already, now's a good time to start stocking up on that candy and hoping you get a good IV. On a similar motion, I want to give a shout out to Mega Heracross. It has the top CP for bug types and as I said before, pretty much any Pokemon gaining a Mega Evolution could have a niche in some shape or form just because of how much more powerful the stats make in and of itself. But Heracross has the top CP for bug types, so that's why I'll be focusing on that one. If there's any assurance, Pinsir is not too far behind, so if you're not in a region that gets Heracross, you aren't completely out of luck. It's also the top CP for fighting types underneath Mega Mewtwo Y, and for reasons that I said before about Mewtwo just having terrible fighting type moves. It is possible that Mega Heracross will end up being a better fighting type. Just figure I'd bring that up to keep it in mind. So with access to both bug and fighting type moves, and the role Kyle already plays in Ultra League, definitely possible for it to shake up quite a few metas, both from the rating side and the PvP side. And on the tangent of Pokemon that already have a role in PvP, getting Mega Evolutions to help shake up the meta even further, this is a good time to give a shout out to Charizard and Swampert. And honestly, I could at least give a slight mention to any starter from Generation 1 or Generation 3. Because all the starters from both those generations got Mega Evolutions. It's just that I'm going to be focusing on Charizard and Swampert because they're the most prominent Pokemon in multiple leagues of PvP already. Depending on if the CP is calculated before you go into the battle or after you Mega Evolve, these Pokemon have the potential to bust all the leagues in Go Battle League. Charizard Y easily has the potential to become the best fire type Pokemon with his Mega Evolution just in DPS, overpowering any fire type that you already would use on your raid team. Only thing I could think of that would overpower it 
is Primal Groudon due to it gaining a fire typing and having a couple fire charge moves. Doesn't have a fire quick move though, so I'm going to keep assuming that Charizard is going to be the most powerful fire type. So yeah, it's already got quite a niche in Great League and Ultra League. So implementing a Mega Form when it's already slipping underneath the CP for both of those leagues? <laughs> Busted. Swampert is already incredible in all three leagues of Go Battle League. According to the PvP poke calculations, it's within the top 10 of Great League Pokemon, within the top 5 of Ultra League Pokemon, and even manages to sneak its way as number 21 of the Master League, at least as I'm recording this. Taking this already powerful yet accessible Pokemon and adding the stats boost of a Mega Evolution to it, huge yikes for anyone that has to go up against it. And as I started to say before, any of these Pokemon that are both a starter and gain a Mega Evolution have huge potential for DPS in the raid scene because they all have access to the most powerful move of each respective type. Charizard and Blaziken get access to Blast Burn, Swampert and Blastoise get access to Hydro Cannon, Venusaur and Meganium get access to Frenzy Plant. Easily the best move of each of those types. So out of those Pokemon, and I almost completely forgot about Charizard X. It essentially trades a little bit of power that Charizard Y would have in exchange for replacing his flying type with a dragon type, becoming the dragon fire type that the entire community dream of it to be. And that dragon subtype isn't just for fanfare. Becoming dragon fire over fire flying comes with an entire trade of strengths and weaknesses. You do gain a weakness to ground type moves that you didn't previously have, but in exchange, you're nowhere near as vulnerable to rock type moves as you once were. Plus that dragon typing gives you a resistance to water types to cancel out your fire weakness and you don't have an electric weakness anymore, it does turn Charizard into a completely different beast. The one, I guess, disappointing thing about the inevitability of transitioning this Pokemon to Pokemon Go is the real element that distinct Charizard Y from Charizard X was Charizard Y's focus in special moves thanks to his Drought and Solar Beam combo in comparison to Charizard X's focus on physical moves because it had an ability called Tough Claws. So things like Dragon Claw would get a boost in power just because they hit directly. Could lead to some interesting elements that make Charizard X more viable in certain situations in comparison to Charizard Y on top of this typing. But until we get abilities in Pokemon Go, we probably won't see anything like that come to fruition. That said, I think Mega Charizard Y is going to be your fire type, at least from the rating side, just because its stat distribution slightly favors it more than Charizard X stat distribution. It's got an even higher CP than even Mega Blaziken. So yeah, you want Charizard for your Mega Fire type, Swampert for your Mega Water type. Probably wouldn't be bad as a ground type either though. And who do you want for your grass type? Let's take a guess. Oh wow, Mega Sceptile actually has more CP than Mega Venusaur. So my personal speculation actually leans towards Mega Sceptile being the better grass type Mega of the two. Though with Sceptile being Grass Dragon with his Mega Evolution, while Venusaur still keeps his Grass Poison typing, certainly could be possible for either one of them to shine in certain raid situations. If you've been playing along for a while, you probably have a good Subtile and a good Venusaur, both with their community day moves anyways, so just hold on to them. Odds are you'll be able to use at least one of them, assuming we actually need the Pokemon to Mega Evolve. Ooh boy, we're almost at half an hour and I haven't even finished going through my list and my notes of Pokemon to cover, even besides the personal shoutouts. So let me see if I can breeze by them real fast. Shout out to Mega Garvor for being the best fairy type, Mega Gengar for being the best ghost type, Mega Alexam will be an excellent psychic type if Metagross isn't already a better Mega Psychic type, Ampharos will probably be the best electric type after his Mega Evolution, Agron could see some use, 
Pinsir, like I said before, might be a fair substitute for Heracross if we don't have access to it. And while there are other things worth considering, like budget options if you don't have Community Day Pokemon or Legendaries, I think it's worth just waiting for a separate episode to talk more about them. Besides, there's a couple that are inevitably gonna suck, but I still want to talk about anyways. So yeah, I guess I will record another podcast talking about Mega Evolutions even more. Hopefully this at least gives you a good general idea of what to stock up on. Like I said in the beginning of this segment, I definitely see potential for any Pokemon that gets a Mega Evolution to have potential in this game in some shape or form. So I'll remember to include the link that I got the list of CPs for Mega Evolutions just so you can scroll through here and see the Mega Evolutions for yourself. And if you got a good Pokemon that gets a Mega form, you might want to hold on to it just in case. If you enjoyed what you hear though, Feel free to support me on any platform that you're watching or listening to this to. Positive ratings on podcast platforms, along with likes and the usual stuff on YouTube. All that helps me grow, reach out to more people, encourages me to make more content. So it's all appreciated. If you want more details of where to find me and the various things I do, show notes slash description should have a link to my site where you can find all the details there. Take care. <laughs>